Hello everyone! In this quick Blender tutorial, we're going to see a few tips for making basic isometric animations in Blender in a quick and easy way. So, a while ago, I shared some short videos I'd made of Blender isometric rooms that build up gradually, like this. It was really fun to make, because I had to design the overall scenes, set up the different animations, and then play around with the lights and the colors. So in this little tutorial, I want to share some tricks so that you too can create this kind of 3D animation. Of course, the first step in this kind of project is to decide on what scene you want to make. Do you want something indoors? Or an exterior scene with more nature stuff? Do you want to test it with small objects? Or with large buildings? All of those can be really cool, and you should definitely try a lot of mix and match. Just keep in mind that an orthographic or isometric view is fairly specific, and that the way you place and space out items needs to be thought of specifically for this type of camera. So what I like to do is always start by setting up my camera shot, and keep it visible at all times to make sure that what I'm making works well in that special view. That being said, in the end, it's up to you to find some original ideas to fill in the scene. But whatever you decide to make, it's always nice to pick a limited and well-thought color palette to help with the global consistency of the shot. Cause the more colors you use, the harder it will be to have them all work together in harmony. You have more risk of putting together incompatible tints. A common way of solving this issue is to use a color palette. So that's a limited set of views that you predetermined, and typically they can either be quite close to one another, or conversely, opposite colors. If you're curious about this notion of color palette, I highly recommend that you watch this amazing video by Blender Guru, where Andrew dives into the different types of color palettes, how they're used in image composition, and how to choose the right one. Also note that in my little isometric room animation, I actually used lighting also to get more uniform and yet interesting colors, in particular with the day to night shift. But if you want to make something more arty or drawing-like, you can also decide to go for full white objects and just enable contouring in Blender. This is quite easy to do. Just go to your render settings panel in the bottom right corner and at the bottom, enable the freestyle option. You can then go to the scene settings and scroll down to further customize the stroke options. I'll let you explore these different sections at your own pace, but here are some examples of stroke effects to give you an idea of what you can make. Alright, now let's say you've chosen the type of scene that you want to make, and you've decided on a set of colors, either a restricted palette or just pure white. The next step is to actually have those objects move and appear so that the scene grows under your viewer's eyes. Designing the animation can be decomposed in three steps. First, at a high scale, you'll need to list what appears when, in which order, and with which intervals. Second, at a smaller scale, you'll need to choose how objects will actually be spawned. Should they scale up from zero as if they were born out of thin air? or slide in from a side, for example. And finally, it can be really cool to tweak your animations with custom curves, so that they actually have a more natural or cartoony feel. That's actually a big part of what makes these animations pleasing to the eye. For the global animation sequencing and the object spawning, it really depends a lot on how many objects you have in your scene, where they are, and what their relative scales are. But still, oftentimes, there are a few good rules to keep in mind. It's usually better to start with the big objects and then sprinkle the little ones on top. Especially if you want your objects to slide into the scene, cause it will then look more logical to have the big ones move to the back of the scene first. And also, you should try to spread your objects' operations over time, rather than bundling everything together, cause that will make sure that there's always something going on. Now, about the curve tweaking, if you're not too familiar with Blender's animation curves, feel free to have a look at this video that I made previously on that specific topic. 
you'll learn all the basics, why this tool is interesting and how to use it. In my case, when I make asymmetric animations like this, I don't really care about the in-easing, cause most of the objects are actually out of the screen at that point. So I mainly focus on the out-easing. And more specifically, I often go for two types of curve easings, either an ease out or a bounce out. You see that an ease out is a good way of smoothing out the object spawning, but without making it too unrealistic. On the other hand, a bounce out gives a more cartoony feel, and honestly, it can be a really quick and nice way to make a cute scene. Once again, it's mostly about you experimenting with various types of curves and animations and intervals and all that to see what best fits your scene. So there you go, those were just some tips and general ideas. I wanted to keep this video quite high level and not dive into specifics, because I think it can help you get your own ideas. But if you're really interested in a step-by-step -step tutorial to make one of those scenes, for example, feel free to drop me a comment and I'll do a follow-up to this video. Anyway, on that note, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this quick blender tutorial and that you learned a few useful tips for making a simple isometric animation. If you did, feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel to not miss the next ones. And of course, if you have other ideas of cool blender tricks that you'd like to learn, tell me in the comments. As usual, thanks a lot for watching and take care.